A lot of news tonight. I want to get it in. Our top story, something that Trump will likely confront tonight head on at his rally. Yesterday, an anonymous figure claiming to be a senior official in the Trump administration authoring an op-ed in the New York Times bashing the president and his agenda and telling lies. Now, the deep state, unelected Washington bureaucrat, actually thinks he or she knows more than you. They know more about who should be president. Your vote to them means nothing. We are smelly Walmart irredeemable deplorables to them. All while this anonymous figure hides behind the liberal New York Times, they are complicit in this. Now the Washington Post, get this, reporting that sleeper cells have awoken inside the executive branch of the United States of America. Think about that. A sleeper cell, a senior official who might have to access to top secret classified information, who might have privilege, privileged insider knowledge about sources and methods, that's people's lives, now actively working within our government against your commander-in-chief. The media won't say this, I will. This is extraordinarily dangerous to this great constitutional republic and the disgusting hate Trump media. They are complicit in this cowardly betrayal. Moments ago, President Trump tweeted the following, are the investigative, so-called journalists of the New York Times, are they gonna investigate themselves? Who is the anonymous letter writer? Now, of course, this coward could be one of literally hundreds of senior level employees in the executive branch. We know that Trump's senior cabinet members and close advisors are all vehemently denying writing this op-ed tonight. We're calling whoever you are, come forward. You have purposely mischaracterized the president's conservative policies in your op-ed. In other words, you're lying about his effective handling of the economy, North Korea, his tough approach towards Russia. You obviously have your own agenda, your own political personal bias. You are an unelected, unaccountable, anonymous official. The American people did not hire you to do this. You have access, perhaps, to intelligence methods do you have knowledge of the president's plans to defend America? If so, are you going to try to undermine that? It's the right thing to do. If you really care about the country, as you so claim to do, as a super patriot, come forward. This country's safety is obviously not the goal of whoever this mysterious figure is, nor does the corrupt media in this country even care. What would happen if resistant sleeper cells had emerged in Obama's White House? Would the media be all in on that? This is all political, working in the shadows, undermining a sitting, duly elected president from within. These are the actions of a deep state super patriot who thinks they know better than you, we, us, we the people. Now, these are actions of someone who thinks Trump never deserved to be president, that we, we were all wrong. These are the actions of someone who cares, what, about democracy and the sanctity of your vote? No. And what does the op-ed author mean? What does he mean when he writes this? Until one way or another, it's over, meaning the Trump presidency. Is that a threat to the president of the United States, one way or another? What does that mean? Because that can be interpreted as a threat to the president. I hope the Secret Service is looking. Now, sooner or later, whoever you are, you'll be gone. And by gone, I mean caught, exposed, fired, and probably held accountable for these horrible deeds, whatever you've done. Now we turn to another top story. This is huge news tonight, breaking only minutes ago. The Hill's John Solomon reporting that Christopher Steele's phony Russian dossier was likely the basis for the ongoing witch hunt into Trump-Russia so-called collusion after it was pushed by several high-ranking deep state officials who all shared one thing in common. A political hatred for Donald Trump is what Solomon writes, quote, there is now growing confidence that the FBI's sudden pivot from Papadopoulos to Steele was driven by several officials, all with serious political baggage. Now we're talking about Andrew McCabe, Page, Strzok, and of course Bruce Orr and Christopher Steele, all Trump haters. And according to Solomon, we're learning that Bruce Orr was attempting to actually steer the FBI so-called Russia collusion investigation toward the phony Steele dossier much earlier than we previously thought. 
Now, several officials, all with serious political baggage, as he describes them. Remember, this is the dossier. This will all be traced back to Hillary. Many of the same figures protected her so she could stay in the race by exonerating her after she obviously committed felonies and crimes. And, of course, the DNC and Clinton funded this phony Russian steel dossier before the 2016 election. They funneled that money through that law firm. That money then goes to Fusion GPS. They hire a foreign national, a spy, Christopher Steele, and, by the way, the wife of a high-ranking, fourth-highest-ranking member of the DOJ, Nellie Orr. They put it all together, op research, unverified lies against Donald Trump. No one verified this information. Nobody. Even Steele himself said under oath the contents were raw intelligence. He did not even stand by his own dossier. But it gets worse. The dossiers leaked to the press. Why? To influence you, the American people, with Russian lies. And worse than that, it spread throughout the highest levels of our federal government by Nellie Orr's husband, Bruce Orr, again, the fourth highest ranking official of the DOJ. And then it was used as the very basis for FISA warrants against the Trump campaign associate, Carter Page. And by the way, I'm told they withheld exculpatory evidence. That's the very basis for what is now Mueller's witch hunt, or even briefed. This is amazing. It starts with Hillary, the DNC, they pay for it. They get the money through funneled money to an op research group. Then it got, hires Christopher Steele. Then, of course, it's being used to get FISA warrants, but it's also being funneled to Mueller's pit bull, as described by the New York Times. Andrew Weissman, the contents of the dossier, he's updated through Bruce Orr. 70 contacts Orr and Steele have together. Hillary to Steele to Russia, right into Rob Mueller's office. Russian lies. You can't make this up. This is insane. A web of corruption and abuse of power surrounding a foreign actor, a phony Russian dossier in an effort to stop this man from becoming president and then destroy him after he did. Now, we did tonight reach out to all the deep state actors mentioned in Solomon's breaking report. So far, no response. But tonight, we do have some positive developments to report. We have 12 Republican lawmakers now calling on President Trump to declassify the retracted parts of multiple FISA documents. Oh, specifically pages 10 through 12, 17 to 34. That could be released as early as tomorrow or next week. And lawmakers now believe that this retracted information, along with 302s and the Gang of Eight, can explain and might have exculpatory evidence on Carter Page and other important information out of the Steele dossier, how a fraud was committed on a court, and how an attempt to sabotage a sitting president. We'll have a lot more on this tonight. Also, more positive FISA developments. One former official who signed off on a FISA request against Page, we now know is subject of a grand jury investigation. Investigation. That's called progress. Finally, former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe fired for lying, and now he may face serious legal issues. And my guess is this grand jury we now have confirmed as convened will look at everyone who committed a fraud on the FISA court, who signed off on the unverified, uncorroborated, phony Russian Clinton paid for dossier and the lies by omission, like not telling the court, even though they knew it, that Hillary paid for it all. Andrew McCabe's attorney responding to us tonight, brushing it off as nothing more than, you know, the standard procedure. We all know better. This is why elections matter. If elected, 61 days, Democrats, they will obstruct the president's effort to drain the swamp. And just like they're trying in vain to obstruct the nomination of Judge Kavanaugh, and today, New Jersey Senator, likely presidential hopeful, Cory Booker, he headlined the Democrats' pathetic political grandstanding, threatening to break Senate rules, release confidential documents about Kavanaugh to the general public. Our own Shannon Breen and others reporting, however, the documents, uh, they had previously been released. And not only that, Cory Booker was told they were released. So still, he had to put on a show based on what he already knew was released for his adoring fans because he's running for president. I don't have time to run it now. But then he went on to call his actions today a Spartacus moment, even though he did zero, nothing courageous. He broke no rules. No, he faced no consequences, just a blatant play to his base so he can run for president in 2020. But in Booker's mind, he rose to the level of a Roman gladiator, risking it all for a cause, calling himself a hero for doing absolutely nothing. It's like Colin Kaepernick going 1-11. And, and then after that, of course, saying, oh, it's, the NFL is unfair to me. 